This is the Rear Lynx Duo 3B. It's basically two cameras masquerading as one, promising a massive 180 degrees of coverage. I'm gonna show you the dual camera stitching magic, whether that join line actually is noticeable, how it integrates with Home Assistant and Frigger, and why substreams might matter a little more than you think. We'll compare it head to head with my trusty RLC 528, dive into the apps that actually let you configure everything properly and explore how those standard RTSP streams make this camera work with pretty much anything. I'll be diving into the details, so if that sounds like fun, then stick around. I've got three rear link cameras keeping watch around the house. There's the PRE video doorbell by the front door, an RLC 520A covering the front garden, and another RLC 520A watching the back garden. All of them are PRE powered, which means they get both power and data through a single ethernet cable. There's no messing about with separate power supplies or worrying about wireless connectivity. These cameras have been absolutely rock solid for months now, with no dropouts, no connection issues, just reliable monitoring day and night. The RLC 520As are great cameras, don't get me wrong, but they've got a fairly standard field of view that leaves some blind spots in the front garden area. Reolink kindly sent me their Duo 3V PoE camera in exchange for an honest review. This is essentially an upgrade from my existing RLC 520A, but one major difference, it offers a massive 180 degree field of view. The way that works is actually quite clever, rather than using a single ultra-wide lens, which could create a massive fisheye distortion and make everything look warped, Rear Link are using two separate cameras side by side. So each camera captures its own 90 degree section and then the camera's internal processing effectively stitches those two feeds together in a real time to create a seamless ultra wide stream. What's particularly neat is that you can actually adjust the angle of each camera when you first set it up. This lets you fine tune exactly what you want to capture and helps maximize that join line where the two feeds meet. I was genuinely curious to see how obvious this scene would be in practice. After all, if it's distracting or creates weird visual artifacts, then the whole concept falls apart. One feature that's absolutely crucial for my setup is substream support, and I'm happy to say that the Duo 3V handles this brilliantly. All of my rear link cameras support this feature, and it's honestly one of the reasons that I stick with the brand. For those running Frigger or similar video analysis software, substreams are a complete game changer. The camera simultaneously captures two output streams. You get a high resolution stream, and in the 3V PoE case, that's 7680 by 2160, and a lower resolution substream that is 1536 by 432, which maintains the same aspect ratio. Frigate uses that lower quality stream for motion detection and object recognition, which stops the hardware from getting absolutely hammered. This is particularly important with the Duo 3B because that 180 degree view creates an unusual ultra wide aspect ratio stream with quite a high resolution. Without substreams, you'd be asking your CPU or hardware accelerator to process every single pixel of that 7680 by 2160 image for detection. Meanwhile, you still get to record the full quality mainstream to disk for when you actually need to see the details like identifying someone's face or reading a license plate. It's kind of the best of both worlds. All of my rear link cameras are PRE powered too, so there's no worrying about battery life, wireless connectivity dropping out or cameras going offline just when you need them the most. That constant reliable stream is essential for proper security monitoring. Okay, time to swap out the old RLC 520A and see what this dual camera setup can actually do. The mounting process was pretty straightforward. Same screw pattern, same PRE connection. Within a few minutes, I had the camera up and was connected to the network. The difference in coverage is immediately obvious and frankly quite dramatic. With the old RLC 520A, I could see a decent chunk of the front garden, but there were definite blind spots along the edges. Anyone approaching from the far left or the far right could potentially avoid detection until they are quite close to the house. With the Geo 3V, I can pretty much see the entire front garden area right from the fence line on the one side to the driveway on the other side. It's like having two cameras covering overlapping zones but getting it all in one continuous stream. The join line between the two camera feeds is there if you're looking for it. I spent a fair bit of time in the settings trying to get it as seamless as possible. The camera software lets you adjust things like the overlap between the two images and the blending algorithm used to merge them. 
it's probably good enough for security monitoring. In practice, you barely notice it, and the benefits from the ultra-wide coverage far outweigh the minor visual compromise. I haven't yet mapped out the new detection zones in Frigate to account for the new field of view, but that's just going to be a matter of drawing a few polygons. Adding this into home system was brilliantly simple, and this is where Reolink really shines. Their integration is platinum tier, which means it's officially supported and maintained by the Home Assistant core team. You get proper ongoing support, regular updates, and everything just works as expected. The setup process is wonderfully straightforward as well. You just go into settings, devices and services, click add integration, search for rear link, enter the camera's IP address, enter your credentials, and within a few seconds, Home Assistant discovers all the camera's capabilities and adds the appropriate entities. With the Duo 3V, you get a comprehensive set of controls and sensors. There's switches for the built-in floodlight and siren, binary sensors for person. Uh, you can get animal detection as well as motion detection, uh, camera entities for both the mainstream and substream. You even get controls for more granular settings like motion sensitivity, floodlight behavior when motion is detected, siren volume levels, and whether the infrared illuminators activate automatically at night. Comparing this to my existing RLC 520A, the entity list is almost identical, which makes sense since they're both modern rear link cameras with similar feature sets. The main difference is just the resolution and aspect ratio of the camera streams themselves. I've got a frigate card set up in my main dashboard that shows live feeds from all the cameras. Swapping to the new camera was literally just a case of editing the card configuration and changing the device reference from the old camera to the new one. Two minutes of work and I was back up and running. The only thing you might notice is as you flick between them, all of the sun, one of the cards suddenly shrinks. And then when you go back to one with a bigger aspect ratio, it suddenly jumps up again. Getting a new camera to work with Frigate was remarkably straightforward. Um, honestly, quite surprised me given the unusual 32 by nine aspect ratio. I basically just copied the configuration from my existing RLC 520A, updated the camera name, the IP address, and changed the resolution settings to match the Duo 3V specifications. The mainstream runs at 7680 by 2160, as I mentioned earlier. Um, that's where you get the ultra wide look, and the substream will use 1536 by 432. Um, everything else in the, in the config stayed the same. Frigate picked up the new camera immediately, started processing the feed and began detecting objects without any hiccups. The object detection accuracy seems to be just as good as my other cameras, which is impressive considering the different aspect ratio and the fact that it is essentially processing a stitched image. The wider field of view means fewer missed events at the edges of the frame, which was exactly what I was hoping for. Previously, someone could potentially walk along of the, the fence line or the hedge line in my case, and only get detected for a few seconds when they crossed into the camera's view. Now I'm getting much earlier detection as they come into the garden from the back garden, which gives me better advanced warning and longer clips to review as well. Reolink provides both desktop and mobile apps for configuration, and I tested both the Mac app and the Android app fairly thoroughly. This is where you'll want to spend some proper time if you're setting up a Duo 3V. You can set up a lot more stuff in the apps than you can through the Home Assistant integration. To connect to it, you just enter your camera's credentials, username and password. As long as you're on the same network, it should be auto-discovered. The settings between both apps are refreshingly consistent. What you can do on your phone, you can also do on your computer. This isn't always the case with security camera manufacturers, so points to Reolink for maintaining feature parity. You can configure way more through these apps than you can in Home Assistant integration, as I said. Uh, for instance, you can completely remove the watermark from the stream image, adjust the timestamp format, format and position, fine-tune the motion detection, sensitivity zones, and importantly for the Duo 3B, really dial in that dual camera stitching together of the two streams. The stitching settings are particularly worth exploring. You can adjust the overlap between the two camera images, change the blending algorithm, and even manually tweak the alignment if these things look slightly off. When I first set up the camera, there was a notable misalignment that made the join lines quite obvious. After spending a few minutes in the app adjusting these settings, I got to a point where you really have to look for the seam to notice it. One extra thing that I'd noticed is in the night mode, if you turn on the floodlight, the glare you seem to get from the vandal proof casing seems to reflect right back at the cameras. 
and it makes the image almost unusable. The infrared light is not quite as bad. Uh, you still get a little bit of glare, but if you look, you can definitely see the seam line much more easily because of the way that the light's bouncing around if that inside that dome. This is something I hadn't really anticipated, but is obviously a little bit of a problem. But if you're relying on this solely to have it as a floodlight to light the way so you can see the people in color, um, then that might be a bit of a problem for you because you'd have to have some alternative means to light the driveway. If you're setting up a Duo 3V, definitely spend some time in the app getting everything tuned properly rather than accepting the defaults. It makes quite a big difference to the final image quality. Since these cameras output standard RTSP streams, you can view them pretty much anywhere that supports video streaming. This is one of the big advantages with going to a, with an established brand like Reolink rather than some more proprietary systems out there. I can pull up the front door feed, for example, on my TV using VLC or some other software if I want to see who's at the door from inside the living room. I can view the streams on my phone using an RTSP compatible app. I can even embed them into custom dashboards or third party monitoring systems. The RTSP URLs follow a predictable format. So once you've got the camera working, setting up additional cameras is just a matter of changing the IP address and the URL. No wrestling with different streaming protocols or vendor specific APIs. So the Duo 3V PoE is a solid upgrade. If you need wider coverage than traditional security camera can provide, the dual camera approach works well in practice. The integration with Home Assistant is seamless and it plays nicely with Frigger and other video analysis systems. If this is the stitching perfect, no, there's still a subtle join line if you're looking for it. Is the wider field of view worth the minor compromise? I think so, yes. For my setup, definitely. The 180 degree coverage means I can now monitor the entire front garden with a single camera, eliminate all of those blind spots that were bothering me a little bit and get much earlier detection if anyone approaches the house from the side. At roughly twice the price of the RLC 520A, it's not cheap, but if you need that ultra wide coverage, then there aren't that many alternatives out there that work this well. And think about it, you're effectively getting two cameras anyway. So what do you think? Are you running rear link cameras in your setup or are you using something else entirely? Let me know in the comments what your experience has been like with security camera integration. I'm always interested to hear about different approaches to the same problem. Don't forget to hit like if this was useful and subscribe for more smart home projects where I dive into the nitty gritty of making everything work together properly. I'll catch you next time and happy automating.